Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I am your host, John Harris, and on my right-hand side is my right-hand man, Gabriel. Hello! And on my left-hand side is my beautiful little lady, Avila, and mm. yeah, that's right, sweetie. This is the Rock Metal Podcast team, and we're going to be chatting with Jake Salzar today of all of the House Productions, and what we're going to be chatting about is the... I guess the music business, the music industry, Jake has a degree in the music business. I guess you can get more specific about that, Jake, as to exactly what that is. But um, during chatting with Jake about his band, Roderick, he started dropping some massive knowledge bombs. And I thought it would be a really good idea to have him on for a Power Talk series to share his thoughts and insights on the music industry slash music business. So, Jake, welcome to the show. John, thanks so much for having me, man. I'm excited to be here again for this time. Thank you, sir. We're like we're like hashtag besties. We go and we get uh, sandwiches at the at the deli, whatever it is that you do in New York. I'm trying to just get specific, but uh, maybe pizza. I don't know. Maybe a bagel. You can go for a bagel. Bagel. I love bagels. Yeah. I go love for- bagels. I haven't had them in such a long fucking time. You know why? We can get bagels, but here's the deal. And this is this is getting super specific. I have Jewish roots, and I know what I'm about to say right now draws battle lines. And I'm pretty sure, Jake, you know exactly what I'm going to say. There's two kinds of bagels in the world, good ones and bad ones. There's yep. there's uh, like crunchy, crispy bagels, and that's the only way to describe it. But that's that's like a Montreal style bagel. And then yep. there's soft bagels. And I'm from Winnipeg, and Winnipeg, even here in Edmonton. The community makes soft bagels, and they're not bad. They're just, they're not the crispy, crunchy bagels. and Which are very good. Which are super-duper awesome. And so I typically don't get bagels here. Um, and that's just, that's just that. But I know that that draws battle lines. I have been in the middle of heated conversations. I've been witness to heated conversations. What kind of bagels do they make in New York? I've only been once, and I don't remember if I had a bagel or not. Only the crispy ones here, honestly. Okay. Can you? Aren't many uh battles that talk about pizza and we got a battle, but as far as bagels go, and no one else claims them but New York. Okay. Yeah, I think that's like a no-brainer on that one. Mm-hmm. Totally. All right. So Jake, yeah. Jake, and I are besties on the bagels. Bagel besties. Bagels when I come. Mm-hmm. Sweet. But yeah, if you want, we can get you some bagels. We can go down to the Jewish bakery. We have a, an amazing Jewish bakery here in Edmonton. So actually, shout out to. Um, Bliss Baked Goods over in the West End, if anybody here in Edmonton is listening in, uh, because of the way uh, Keeping Kosher works, they do some incredible vegan stuff because it's easier to eat uh, Keep Kosher if you're doing vegan. And, uh, yeah. Even she, even she wants you to awesome. check them out. I know. Yep. Sweet. Okay, so we chatted about bagels. We got that out of the way. Next, yeah. next one is... Uh, tell us about your degree. What is it? What does it encompass? All right. What is what does a music business degree really encompass ever? You know what I mean? What is the music business degree at, at this point? <laughs> um, <laughs> th- th- thanks for showering us with confidence, Jake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I might as well have been a liberal arts major, honestly. Um, no, it's it was that's actually come in handy quite a bit. Um, it's it's uh it's pretty much I don't know it's weird because it, they teach you a lot about the old school model right which is not really used very often anymore um you know where labels are king and you know you want to get signed but you want to find a good deal and uh you know never give away your publishing all these things that are really important uh, artists that have you know, labels to support them and they do very well. So it's, so that's what I mean when it's like, what really is the music business these days? I mean, it's, it's kind of, they kind of teach you the old model and say, all right, make it new kind of thing, you know? And, and that's kind of what that is these days. I feel like. <laughs> it's, it's funny because, you know, you mentioned you want to get a label or you don't want a label. And I know the conversation pretty much ever since CD baby came out in the late nineties, the conversation immediately turned to, well, you don't need a label and look at them. They're falling and they're crumbling because they're evil empires. And that sort of became the conversation amongst musicians for the last, I would say, 20 years. Uh, But oddly enough, what's even funny within that in the last scope of the 20 years is any band that's made it from Linkin Park to Korn to Disturbed, they all went on to labels and got signed and played the game. Yeah. Yeah, you have a slimmer chance of doing 
very well with your career without a label. Um, not to say you can't, uh, but you absolutely um, have a better shot with someone backing you than someone not backing you. Still, to this day, I believe that. Yeah. It's just finding the back. You know? Right. So that was going to be my next question, which is, okay, we got the old model, we got the new model. <laughs> I think what uh, I've learned in doing the podcast over the last five years is how much of the old model still exists in a, a large number of ways. I mean, people are still listening to FM radio. Yep. People are still listening to AM radio. Mm -hmm. uh, satellite radio didn't really have the impact, I think, that they thought it would. But that's still a, a, a modicum of – or a medium – uh, right. you know, of, of radio, uh, email is still incredibly powerful. That's how I found out about you. It wasn't social media. It was a regular old email list. Um, you know, and if you go into a big city like LA or New York, you can see, you know, uh, artists taking out billboard signs. I mean, you can't get any older than a billboard sign Yeah. for, you know, their show coming up at the MGM grand or whatever. So um, you know, you mentioned the old way of doing things and uh, uh, blending that with a new way of doing things. So what out of the old is still available that works? And what is some of the new stuff that's coming in? So I think I think old school model like guerrilla marketing and heading to the mall. I mean, maybe not so much in the pandemic days, but uh, going to the mall and handing out a CD was still very prevalent in the 2019 and 2018. You know, obviously 2020 changed a lot about that. Um, so I think real marketing is still is still a very uh, successful way to get your name out there. People like the personal touch, or they don't. It, it could go either way. People could love it or hate it. Usually, you get about 50 50 there. Um, you know, but I I also think that uh, you know pressing cds and handing them out and i don't know any anything in that realm of the old school still applies i mean like you said a billboard that's going to get attention people are going to see that um and i think i think the 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 problem with the new age stuff is that it's all digital which is not a way to run a campaign all digitally it doesn't it's not necessarily the way to go which is why i said blending is is really your best bet there um, but you know, I mean the new age stuff like social media, that's, that's helpful, you know, keeping your audience engaged, but I think it's better for people who know you to keep them remembering you rather than finding new people to follow you. Very rarely have I seen anybody on social media and been like, oh, they're my new favorite band. Usually I'll hear a song from them. I mean, radio is still massive. It's still massive. FM radio is still huge. There's you hear a song on there, you like it, you're instantly going to stream it. As long as you're not driving, people don't drive in text or stream. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, radio is still massive. It's just it's it's a combination. There's many things that still work. I mean, look, at, um, records are coming back. Like vinyl records, people are printing them. I know several artists who are my age or younger have just got vinyls printed of their songs. You know, so. It's all it's all a matter of finding your niche, what works for you, and what doesn't. You know, every artist is different. Yeah, well, that totally makes sense. You know, because uh, it seems like a lot of people are concerned about, um, you know, the old way is completely dead. And I, I think to myself, well, I'm still listening to FM radio, and I know people still listen to AM radio, and I find out about most of my band things through email subscription newsletter lists. And I mean, right. You know, these, these seem to be all kind of old things. And I know when I've been to L.A. <clears throat> or Toronto or New York or Vancouver, it doesn't really happen so much here. And I think it's just, I don't know, we do have billboards. But I see a lot of billboard action going on for, you know, a show that's going to be happening at the Hollywood Bowl or the, the Jim Jim right. Grand or, you know. And it's like, OK, well, how many bands out there are taking out, you know, park benches or, <laughs> you know, bus stop signs? <laughs> I don't know, but I might do it, honestly. You don't really see, like, the smaller bands do that kind of thing. But you know what? I mean, I would be pretty damn impressed if I did. If I saw, like, I don't know, Goalkeeper on a billboard saying, hey, we're here and we exist. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. It would be pretty impressive. Um, but I think I think a num the number one way to look at that um, about the blending is kind of it's a big part of my business as a music business person is, you know, 
not not to shout it out, but the whole idea of well, you need bulk order shirts for shows, and that's kind of like an old school way of doing things. But you also need an online platform where print on demand is very popular. So it's like it's like the blend thing is just so obvious. That's the way to go. You know, like you're you're never gonna have one way that works for you totally. So why not have why not use all of them? Mm-hmm. That's right. All you of know? the above is an answer in this pop quiz, baby. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Why why settle for one when you can have them all? Yeah. Or like an Iron Man one or something. And it's like yeah. why why have or when I can have both? Right. Exactly. And no such a, thing as a good Yeah. Yeah. No and, such thing as a good or. Yeah. Unless you're in a boat, and I'm not in a boat, so and is my favorite conjunction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd rather have an, a motor and an oar. You never know. That's you right. Know? That's right. A good boat has a motor and an oar, because if the motor kicks out, baby, you got to make sure you are you got shoulders like boulders. You Otherwise, got that oar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you ain't getting exactly. back to shore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we chatted about bagels. Crispy bagels for the win. I'm drawing the battle line right here. Uh, right. And then Bliss Baked Goods, which serves soft bagels, but they are an incredible uh, vegan and Jewish bakery out here in the West End. Okay. Now, the next other one that I think is a kind of a crazy question, but what is the music industry or what is the music business? And I think it kind of stumps people. It kind of stumped me for a number of years until I started to actually get involved in it and realize that taking guitar lessons down at the local store doesn't make me a part of the music business. Uh, right. <laughs> even being in a band, Weekend Warrior doesn't necessarily make me a part of the music business. So it's kind of a unique thing. So what is the music business? What is the music industry? What What is it? First and foremost, it's a machine. Um, and a very well-oiled machine when it's working well. Um, but I think it's, it's ultimately a, a starving machine right now, um, because it's, it's ready for change. It's like, it's like a model that's been running since God knows when it started, 1920, maybe. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's a business that's poised for change and I think it is changing. But ultimately, what is it at the end of the day? It's it's the people behind the scene that make things happen. I think to me, that's what the music business is. It's the it's everybody from uh, your PR person, you know, to um, your manager, to your record label, to uh, your merch person. You know, I mean, everything's important. It's all it's all. Uh, like I said, a machine and a machines don't work without all the parts working together. And, uh, I think, I think no matter how big or how small, whatever you do to propel an artist's career, a musician's career is a part of the music business. And that, t- whether it's a roadie, I mean, roadies get, you know what I mean? Like anybody who's helping propel the artist's career, I think is, is a part of the music business. They all work together. You're right. Okay, now, one of the things you mentioned was that it is a starving uh, or a hungry thing that needs needs change. And oddly enough, I think we've been saying that for probably about 25 years at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, when record labels started gouging consumers in the 90s for overpriced CDs, um, right. which then eventually blew up into the whole Napster thing where people were like, well, screw you, we'll just take it for free. <laughs> Yeah. Up, to, yeah, up to where we are now, where we have "quote unquote" legitimate. Well, I guess we could include iTunes in there too. You know, people yeah. do, people do want to download it, but they do want to pay for it, and that was a good model. But now we're at the point where we are now, where we've got people streaming. We have an integrated quasi social media thing going on with Spotify. I don't know if Apple Music is title are doing the same kind of thing, but Spotify is really starting to expand itself on that. Yeah. But the artists are not being remunerated anywhere near as well as they would have been under a traditional model. So I think, in my opinion, that's one of the next things that needs to change is, yeah, Spotify is great, but let's get the artists what they deserve. And how do you do that, Um, in my opinion? So why did the artists start to starve? Um, Unfortunately, even though that is 
it is super backwards. Um, the artist is the bottom of the totem pole. Yeah. And to me, what happened was the executives and the record labels started to starve. So the booking agents started to starve because now they're not paying them as much to help them tour. And um, it all trickles down. You know, the managers are now, you know, they want to make 20% instead of 10 because, well, they're just not making the money they used to. And who's paying for that now? The artist. It all comes down to the artist. Oh, the record label's not making as much, so now 360 deals are now a thing. You know, it's just like, it's like, oh, I'd rather take a, a percentage of everything than to have your publishing or your your record sales or part of your concert sales or your merch. They want all of it. And now, so ultimately, because the artist is the one who is going to, at the end of the day, make the money, everybody's taking a cut of it to where the artist is now starving. It's just like, it's a broken system. It's a very broken system. And how do we change that? I think it's starting to. You have to start cutting out the middlemen. And that's why artists are becoming so self-sufficient because it's like, why I can't afford to pay all these people because I'm not even making that money. How do I even pay for a house or or an apartment or a shitty apartment? You know, how do I how do I afford all these things when I'm giving my manager fifteen to twenty percent, the record label another twenty to thirty percent, or whatever the hell their deal was mm -hmm. um, of everything, and uh, my publicist needs to get paid uh, if you're lucky eight hundred dollars a month. You know, like for a good publishers, it's just like it's it's all it all trickles down to the artist. And that's that's where the broken part of the system, uh, in my opinion, is at. And I don't think that there is a world without all of these players. But I do think that maybe some of them are not as essential as others. Oh, the big debate. Who's essential? Weigh in in the comment yeah. section down below. Yeah, weigh in because I genuinely don't know that answer. I'm not sure anybody knows that answer. I'm, I'm not sure anybody knows many answers at this moment, <laughs> which is why it's still broken. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I have had the privilege of chatting with um, musicians who have been at, in the game for 25 plus years. Some of them, you know, 40, 50 years, I've been able to chat with some legends. And one of my questions for them often is, how has the music industry changed in, in your perspective or, or whatever? And you get varied answers. Some people like it better. They find it more flexible. They can get that middleman out of the way. Some people have said, you know what? I'm 60 years old in a thrash metal band. I was supposed to die 30 years ago. But now I can actually get out on stage and play for fans and give them the music they want instead of having some guy in a suit and tie tell me I'm too old. And I thought, well, that's cool. And then another... That is cool. On another side of it, we get, well, in 1986, I was flying around in a private jet on record company money. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what? Good for them, first off. <laughs> yeah. <you know, laughs> that's incredible. But that kind of shows um, you the difference between selling records... You know, and being able to get a deal where you get cut a check, you know, you get a six figure check to go record your album and film your music videos and then just pay us back through royalties. Right. Versus today where it's like, OK, you just got, you know, seven tenths of a penny <laughs> for a stream on Spotify. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, per, I think it's like, per, what is it like per? Oh, uh, what is it? Per thousand streams or something like that. You get like, I don't know. I can't remember. It's like. Yeah, I think you're right. It's like a like a seventh of a penny per stream, and then like a thousand streams. Yeah, I don't know. It's some. It's like something really stupid, isn't it? It's like mm -hmm. really dumb. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the number exactly. I remember learning it in school, but it's really stupid. It's a really bad number. <laughs> it is a it is a really bad number. Okay. Yeah. So we've chatted about bagels, bliss bait goods here on the West End in Edmonton. We've chatted about what is the music industry, what is the music business, right? Um, and then, yeah, you mentioned it's a machine. It definitely is. It's a machine of a series of incredibly miscellaneous and somewhat discombobulated parts. Yeah. You know, for example, I'll have a band from Italy whose manager is from the States and their tour manager is from Belgium. And I'm on a, you know, a podcast show in Canada and we've all somehow managed to connect with each other and their record label is in Germany. Right. Well, you know what? That's the amazing part of it these days. 
that's the thing that I think needs to be capitalized in the new age is that is the fact that I'm sure that that um, streamable streamable concerts are going to be huge, you know, in the future. Um, because uh, with the pandemic looming, I mean, traveling is kind of out of the question, um, you know, so I think that's going to continue to rise. I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's just there's you have this whole world to be seen, but then at the same time, this uh, oversaturated world of social media that you probably won't get seen because of it. You know, the possibilities there, but the chances are still slim. And that's you just, you know kind of just knocked something into my head with that because yeah that's that's the good part of the new age yeah well you reminded yeah <laughs> i was reminded uh, i'm trying to remember what it was called but it was exactly that it was a platform and i can't remember who created it live something and it was not creative live no what is it anyway it was this band is going to come on we're going to film it professionally we're going to put it onto the internet kind of like a pay-per-view thing and it only lasted for a few years. I don't think it exists anymore. And I think it's because they were gouging the artists or they had really bad deals or, or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the basic idea was that. And if it had uh, been more productive, it would have really uh, been the solution, I think, during this time where yeah. it's just been left up to, to bands and either they have the budget to have uh, smoke and flash and flashbangs going on. To film, right. to film it or whether they're in their living room and they're just live streaming on Facebook. <laughs> Have you played in front of absolutely nobody? Uh, most of my life. Yeah. it's re- <laughs> So that's the one thing about live concerts, I feel like. And that's the thing. Whoever could figure out how to make it feel like you're playing in front of a live audience when you're not, that's going to be the winner of this game. Because that's that's the, the streamable game. That's that's going to be the winner of the streamable concert, in my opinion. Because it's really hard as an artist to play in front of absolutely nobody. I mean, we've all done it. Yeah. Because, um, like, imagine that. Like, you you feed off the energy of the crowd, right? So when you're not with the crowd, then what happens? Yeah. You know, and that's that's the number one thing with streamable concerts is how do you make that work? <laughs> yeah. Well, and even as an artist, the amount of growth that I had was not sitting on the edge of my bed practicing scales. It was getting up in front of a crowd of several thousand people and fe- yep. feeling the oh shit moment. Yep. And that's how I grew as an artist. Um, I agree. You know, so that's yeah, that's definitely something to consider and there's been lots of ideas banging around i know some people were thinking about having drive-in concerts where people are sitting in a like a drive-in and they're listening with the speaker and there's like the band yeah like uh, i mean that's just that's just like that's just patching up an old model and making it covid friendly you know what i mean like that's i don't know if that's something that would survive after the pandemic you know, I, I don't. I genuinely don't believe that would survive that in a, in a world where there's no pandemic anymore. Right. Um, it's a cool concept for now, but that's a lot of investment for a pandemic that could only be around for a few years. You know, who yeah. knows? Yeah. Okay, so I was wrong. It's called Live Nation, and they are. St- oh, really? Live Nation does that? Yeah, they are. They're definitely still around. Yeah, they're definitely still around. I'm on their website right now, so I've just just wiped the egg off of my face. Um, <laughs> but I did hear a few years ago that something something happened, like they they weren't giving good deals or they were gouging artists or something. So maybe they've got that solved or they fixed that. Um, but I hope so. They're like the biggest concert production company in all of the u.s i believe if it is called live nation it was live something live nation is as definitely definitely still the biggest in the u.s like i don't know about anywhere else but i've every huge concert that you go to is either sponsored by or produced by live nation yeah i should probably just stop talking jake (laughs) Leave this up to up to you because you've got the business degree, so you're you're ready to rock and roll, man. Um, so I guess my question is: after you get a degree like that, what's what's your intention? That you're going to go work for Capitol Records? What did did you do something like that? Did you work at Warner Brothers for you know seven years, climb your way up, and? Uh, I, unfortunately, <laughs> no. Um, I think that would that is the most logical succession of my my degree, but it's it's not what I did. <laughs> Right. It's what I should have done, 
but it's not but it's not what I did. Okay. Um, so what I did was I played in a band for several years, still do, um, and I applied my knowledge there uh, and kind of just went off on my own. I've always been a do-it-yourself kind of person. Um, like if, if something doesn't seem right or doesn't feel right about your project or something like that, let's make it the best thing possible. Like even as a kid, I've always been like that. Like let's make this better. Like if my parents got me a costume for like a Power Ranger when I was a kid, and I was like, this is not legit enough. I would try to make it legit enough. Like it's just oh. it's just how I've always been. Wow. Um, so instead of instead of doing the most logical thing, I I uh, I did it on my own. And now I actually own my own business, like we said, Fall House Productions, where uh, I do everything on my own, and it's a very challenging world, but uh, but it's very um, fulfilling, you know. It's it's uh, and it, for me, it's a no brainer, the right choice, you yeah. know, to to do this on my own, build my own career, because I've never been one to work for someone else. It's just I don't like doing it. Um, I I always I'm very critical of the people that I work for. I'm like, yeah, we could be doing this better. You know, like I'm that asshole who does that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, no logical choice for me is is uh, to just build my own quote unquote music business empire and go from there. You know. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you know, be an artist. That's my, still my number one priority is be an artist. So. Wow, my daughter's going crazy with my phone. It's probably disabled for the next three years at this point. Probably. It just deleted everything on there. It probably did. <laughs> nothing nothing on there is important anyway. Oh, the only thing now, important is her. Now, Gray, it's... And that's true. For 15 minutes. That's totally fine. Whatever. Let her, let her play with it. I need you to watch her so she doesn't fall off the couch, okay? Thanks, kiddo. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I am also that guy. I'm the guy who's kept out of management because I read leadership and management and motivational books. And so I typically have an answer that would save them, you know, time and energy that they don't want to hear because they want to figure it out for themselves. So they just, you know, take offense to it. And, uh, yeah. Then John, we're very similar. We're very similar people. <laughs> I, I have read, I have read those, those same like management books. Like I had a music business book that I, read back to front in like high school like you know i always felt like no one else is going to care about my career more than i will yeah kind of thing yeah and like you know i don't know nobody likes to be uh talked back to uh, from the uh intern that's just starting at hopeless records and uh i would love to work for hopeless don't get me wrong but I, it's just not it's not uh not in my wheelhouse right now i'd rather just do things on my own yeah yeah you know okay i was gonna say i i got a I got a record industry contact, I think, in Jersey. Joyzy. Joyzy, if you want to go. They got the best gravy in Joyzy, huh? <laughs> so. Hey, I mean, I'm not far from there. My girlfriend is, is from there, so uh, Sweet. we definitely are there quite a bit. Actually, we're filming a music video there this weekend. You have to. It's got a, you, can't, you can't have a music video in New York. You can't be happy. <clears throat> no. Not only that, but uh, you can also expect to... Uh, have a much higher budget for uh, for where you're going <laughs> as very, well. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Uh, okay, fantastic. We chatted about bagels, bliss baked goods, what is the music industry, how the industry needs to change, and then we just got into uh, some, some bouts of uh, what I would call, I don't know, the entrepreneurial spirit or the entrepreneurial mind. Yeah. A lot of companies say they're looking for, you know, their staff to have an entrepreneurial spirit, but they don't really mean it because uh, when they get somebody in who has done the work, they're not like, oh, that's that's amazing. Uh, they just don't feel that way. So that kind of took another right. turn for itself. But I guess my next question, you kind of mentioned this. You went into uh, your own band. You took your own lessons. You're doing your own thing. But from your perspective, from your degree and your experience, what is something that a band right now listening in should be doing or should be considering as a part of their five-year plan? Or did I just say it by saying you should probably have a plan? A <laughs> <laughs> uh, plan is always good. Plan is always, is always good. Um, hmm, what should they be doing a part of their five-year plan? Uh, oh my God. I don't know. You kind of did say it with the five-year plan. 
I don't know. That's a good, that's a really good point is have a five-year plan. Like you don't want to be that artist that's like, all right, well, I got to, uh, you know, the next level of where I wanted to go at the end of this year. And now it's like, well, I don't have any more songs and <laughs> now I have to write a whole album or, um, you know, and, and people are going to be waiting a long time now or, uh, I don't know. Yeah, have a freaking plan, man. Like, at the end of the day, always be, like, two steps ahead of where you're at, at least two steps. Um, you know, because, like I said, you don't want to be at a point where you're uh, not engaging with people anymore or you're playing the same songs at a show that you played two months ago. Or, you know, it's just, you want to be, I don't know, have a plan. Find find what you want, how you want to get there, and how you're going to get there, and that's that's really the most important thing. Um, you know, because everything that we've talked about here all encapsulates into that. It's like, all right, well, am I gonna go the more traditional rate route with like my marketing? Am I gonna try to hit up, I don't know, uh, radio stations and see if they'll accept? They won't, but you could try um, <laughs> and accept my song onto their playlist you know like have a plan what are you gonna do yeah that's so important it yeah. really is so important like roderick is is like three steps ahead of where like I'll, I'll be honest with you like the band is is working on two eps that are gonna come out next year like that's we're already past this year we're already way past this year you know right. yeah, just have a plan be ahead of the game because yeah. you never want to be starving for content mm-hmm well, you know, it's funny you mentioned you, you may not get on a on a radio playlist and probably not during prime time. Uh, right, true. But, but true. Uh, hip hop in New York, for example, blew up because of yeah getting onto the radio, and I think even some of the that time was hijacked. Uh, but still, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, getting onto the that radio. Uh, I have a friend actually in uh, Toronto who got onto. A radio station there and i think it was at like you know 10 30 at night right not prime time but still and it was just an email and now he's friends with that dj which you know doesn't hurt so yeah part of your plan i think should be getting your ducks finding out what they are putting them in a row right. and, ex and executing them and part of that really is just taking those dares sending those emails making those phone calls making those connections right just talk about it to everybody hijack because the you never know yeah you never know what's gonna happen and what's gonna come from like you you really just if you love it so much talk about it and people will love it too that's right baby so mm -hmm. words of wisdom yep I'm, <laughs> s I'm still waiting for a band to take out a a bus stop ad <laughs> you're gonna see a bus stop ad for roderick it's what I'm going to see. I don't love it. I'm going to be like, yes, yeah. thank you. I'm going to spill my coffee everywhere. I'm like, yes, <laughs> somebody did spill it. Your coffee. Yeah. You spill your coffee on your soft bagels. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, man. How did you get a thousand people to show up at your show? I don't know. I advertised it. Oh, I man. Advertised it. I'm, advertised yeah. It. What keywords did you yeah. put into Facebook? Like, no, no, no. I just, I just advertised it. You know, all those ad companies yeah. that, yeah, I just advertised it. Yeah. Um, okay. You know what? Too many, too many uh, fish in the sea with social media these days. Good luck getting seen. You know, like I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's a bad platform, but yeah, man, I don't know. P you know, people are going to drive past that billboard. It might be a better choice. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just a local artist. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but like, it might work. Yeah, it might you work. Heard it here first, and please just give us credit. That's all we're asking. Yeah, yeah. You know, all my all my humble ego needs is for you to write in the comment section about how I was able to help your band, or Jake was able to help your band. Uh, you yeah, know, take it, take it to the next level. No, you can have the, you can have the credit on that one. Oh. I'll just be the unknown guest who was, who was there. Oh, thanks, baby. I guess I should put interview yeah. with unknown, and that'll be unknown. Your, that'll be your new rapper name or your video game name, your video game handle, unknown. Video game, yeah, with a zero. Yeah. It's unknown with a zero. I'm not. I don't even play oh, video no, games, so it's just going to be me streaming literally a black screen. But oh. yeah, we could do that. Well, that makes sense because you're unknown. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Full circle. And if it's any consolation, I have chatted with Capitol Records executives, and you are way too nice. You would not fit in. I really. They're, they're Wait, nice, I but they're very. 
they're very nice, but they're very down to business. Like when that, that's the level at which the music business becomes just the brass tacks. Like you're going to bring in a song, uh, and we're yeah. going to turn it into a hit and we're going to make money. And that's what we do. Cause that's the business that we're in. You know what though? <laughs> that's how it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. if that's what you're there for and that's what works for you, I say go for it. Yeah. You well, know, and it, and it being makes, nice works for me. Yeah. And it makes sense, you know? Like, I yeah. I cook for a living. We're not going to sit there and talk about which Betty Crocker recipe is best. We're going to, you know. That's true. We're gonna That's make, very true. We're going to make what sells, and we're going to have a menu that sells, and it's going to be engineered so that we can turn a profit, because that's why we're in business. And and all power to them. Mm-hmm. Do you think that'll ever break? You think that model will ever break? Not the not the the being a, a jerk kind of thing and get down to business kind of. Thing. But do you think the idea of the major labels will ever? I mean, they got to figure out something, don't they? You think they're doing well? How do you think they're doing? I'm gonna interview you. Yeah. How do you think they're doing? Yeah. I don't think they're doing well uh, for the most part. I don't think the music industry in general is doing well. I don't think it's doing as bad as people want to make it out to seem. Yeah. Uh, however, I think there's no middle class. That's my opinion on that. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, there's no middle class. It's like successful and not. Mm -hmm. I feel like, right? Yeah. Uh, But I mean, you know, for example, I've got artist friends who've been at it for like 25 years, and when they're not on tour, they're back at their day job. Yeah. And I think that I don't know how long that has been going on, but somehow, in some way, the music industry is one of those magic things that has twisted the perception of reality that if you've got a record on the store shelves, you've got it made. And I don't know how many people have ever really ever in the music industry been in that position other than probably a a chosen few and who still really work hard for it. Like Elvis worked for it. He was on tour all the time. He had a spot in Vegas. I mean, he worked, um, Justin, Yeah, yeah, Justin Bieber works. So Justin Timberlake works. So a lot of these people, they're working. Michael Jackson worked. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Worked himself to death, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, Quincy Jones almost worked himself to death a couple of times with a couple of aneurysms. So it, right. it definitely is an industry that lends itself to workaholics. Yes. Yes, it is. You know. But- Do you think that the way to make it as an artist these days is to – because my opinion – behind that is how do you make it as an artist these days you have to be an entrepreneur i mean justin timberlake doesn't just write songs i mean he acts of course that's obvious thing but there's a ton of things he does without music being involved at all Mm -hmm. you know i mean a t-pain is like a restaurant owner now like he's like a a, an investor for restaurants but i mean the guy the guy did very well in music for in like the 2000s you know i mean it's just i feel like it's all about being in order to be successful, it's not about having a day job, but it's about building an empire for yourself, you yeah. know, building upon your success. Yeah. Multiple uh, sources of income. Right. Coming in from different places and, you know, some common ones that are pretty easy to do, like Avril Lavigne. I remember at some point had uh, a fragrance come out, you know, for, right. for perfume. And then you get. Right. Yes. Uh, some rappers came out, you know, with their bottles, uh, alcohol of some sort, or at least sponsor alcohol of some sort. Uh, even Wayne Gretzky of all people has his name on, on a couple of wine bottles and beer bottles now out here in, uh, in Canada. And it's like, how much does he actually have his say in any of that stuff? Who knows? Right. Right. But, yeah. Um, maybe he just has, uh, the identity locked to it. Who knows? Yeah. Really? Who knows? Hi, sweetie. But you know what? All the power to them, because that's uh, that's the way to do it. I think if yeah. you're an artist, find multiple. Str- that was the num. Okay, sorry. Back to square one on that. That square is the one. number one thing that 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 we were taught in music business these days is multiple streams of revenue. That is the most important thing you can do, and that's everything from merch to you. You know, you you find multiple streams of revenue, and you just keep building upon it. And that's that's what the biggest artists do these days, you know? Like you said, with the perfumes, the perfumes are huge, by the way. Mm-hmm. They're still doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, perfumes. Did we talk about Tony Robbins at some point? He's doing supplements now. You can buy your calcium pills from Tony Robbins now. Amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. You know? Cause, Good for him. Yeah. I probably will. 
you know, because the, the, the basis of it or the sad thing of it is that there's one factory in China making all the protein powder and you just get your name slapped on it and right. you sell it and there's that. Or like wineries, for example, they say, yeah, we've got some overstock. We can slap your name on it for X amount and there's that. Once you start getting yep. into, you know, large quantities of industry and big business, you start getting into some really interesting and unique takes. Yeah. But yeah, diverse, so diversifying your portfolio is uh, a wealth principle. And uh, yep. thank you, sweetie. Yeah, diversifying your portfolio, however that is. So yeah, so some people might be a massage therapist and they like doing that. So they're not really going to look into owning a restaurant or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, the, you could be hot one day and, and not the next day and you're making all kinds of connections in the music industry. So what other industries can you get? your foot into and you know cooking again similar thing what does it take to be a food network star right you, you've got to publish books you got to write blogs you got to come out with yep. recipe how many times can somebody come out with a buttermilk pancake recipe but they right. do they do it they do they do it and they just tweak one thing yep. they don't use buttermilk they use almond milk right almond milk <laughs> almond <laughs> milk pancakes exactly so yeah exactly actually they're really not bad um <laughs> but um Oh man, I lost my thought. Yeah, and then Damn. yeah, so there's the TV show appearances, and it's not just one yeah. TV show like they used to have, like you know, like Bobby Flay's one TV show. Now, now right. it's Bob. Now it's Bobby Flay everywhere. He's just showing up, making yeah, guest exactly. appearances. Uh, exactly. While quote unquote running his restaurants, which I'm pretty sure he has people to do that for him. Yeah. You know, and it takes. Well, time. you said before. Yeah. You said before, one day you're hot, one day you're not, kind of thing with the music industry. Um, and if you ever get to that level, good for you, by the way. Yeah. But, um, you know, something to be said about that is something that they did teach us in, in music business school. Um, and I don't know if this is like a, I don't know if this is like a lesson in a chapter or one of the teachers just kind of like kind of snuck it in there. But if you have a success, if your career spans like eight years, you're doing, you did very well in the music industry. Like you're a career that lasts longer than eight years is like doing very well. Like the Justin Bieber's. I mean, how often do you really hear about Rihanna? You know what I mean? Like, I don't get me wrong, Rihanna's still a massive star. Um, but there are artists that, like, if you're at the top of your game and you're still doing very, very, very well after, like, five to eight years, you did really, really, really well. So, like, yeah, build in something that's going to hold you <laughs> after you've kind of hit that knot. Because mm -hmm. there are tons of artists who just are not what they used to be. I mean, T-Pain is not what he used to be as an artist. So what did he do? He built this empire around him where it's, it has nothing to do with music. Because he, got, I'm sure he knew that was going to happen eventually. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you Drake know? said, I got my retirement already funded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You a big Drake fan? I have to be. Why is that? Because he's from Canada? Yeah, it's a thing. Okay, it's that's a thing. fair. Yeah, it's a thing that we have. That's fair. Small enough community up here in Canada. Spread yeah, out. Yeah, not to get not, not to get political, but Trump's from New York, and I'm not saying I'm the biggest Trump <laughs> fan ever, so I don't know how that works. I don't think that works out that way. <laughs> I don't know. It's a little different, though. There's probably more people that live in New York State than in all of Canada, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> There's probably more people that live in Manhattan than all of Canada alone. Pop. That's a pretty filled area. Population of New York. Well, the other thing, cool thing about Manhattan is the population between eight and five, and the population after that, because a lot of people flood in for work and then they leave. Yeah, you know what? The influx of people from eight to five. I've never even thought of that, but yeah, it must be massive. Yeah, uh, nineteen point four five million apparently people live in New York State, and Canada has about thirty odd million. So yeah, New York State is. Damn We're two thirds of the way there. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. You guys have a big country. I mean, a lot of it's cold. Like a lot of it, you don't really want to live in. Yeah, that's exactly correct. Yeah. I mean, I like the cold. I like snow, but I'm an odd one out. I really, really am. Yeah, I was gonna say you really, really are. Mm -hmm. I hate the cold. I don't know if I'd be able to live in Canada just for that fact alone. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to move to like. I don't want to say Florida because that shit's bat shit crazy over there. But like yeah. I, but you know, I love you, Florida, but not for me to mm -hmm. live there. Yeah. Um, Florida really yeah, shown like its colors. Yeah. 
I'm ready to move somewhere warm, though. Yeah. Someplace, someplace uh, warm. If I wasn't, like, broke, I would definitely be a snowbird, for sure. Yeah. No questions asked. Yeah. My parents moved to Arizona at some point, and, uh, you know, better than Florida, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, I had family from Arizona, so I would, I would like to say, hopefully. Awesome. I have family in Florida as well, but they moved there, so it's different. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. All right, we chatted about bagels, we drew the battle lines, we chatted about the music industry, how the industry needs to change, live platforms, how that is going to happen. We chatted about right. huge, big, major label machine success. We chatted about diversifying your portfolio as an artist, uh, which I think kind of even just goes beyond somebody who's just listening in and their band is yeah. choosing between should we do a single, should we do an EP, should we do an album? And, you know, I have an answer for that. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, I find a lot of times people are pretty wound up in their emotions on that. Well, we just want to do an album. All right, cool. Well, then go do an album. Right. Or we just well. Th- here's the thing on that: if you're gonna do an album, you better make sure every single song is a banger, because you are you are gonna spend a lot of time and money working on that album, um, for your singles to be the most breakthrough out of everything. Yeah, and it's and it's just. It's just the way it works these days, um, you know, because people listen to singles. It is how it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, the industry has been gearing towards that for a long time, right? With radio. Ra- I mean, radio kind of started that. Um, but it's now more prominent than ever with playlists and such. So um, in my opinion, if you're going to do any form of, com- form of compilation of something, it's EPs. Um, but if you want to span your content out, which I think is more important these days, do singles. Or you could do singles that end up in an EP. But I think an album's kind of not really the way to go right now. You could also reimagine your single and and film yourself in a room (laughs) with SM7 microphones and pianos. That's true. Yeah. Yep. That whole thing is an imagination. We imagined that we're in that room. It's not really actually happening, by the way. Whoa. It's all reimagined. Everything's reimagined. Shabam! Cool. So the real yep. test of faith, Mind blown. the real test here is one year from now, Jake, your band has made it. My podcast has made it. And we're just happy. And we've got an official sponsorship from Boom Boo Rum, just like Rick Ross and uh, uh-huh. Lil Wayne. It was at Costco, at Costco Wholesale for like $30 Canadian, which is like, what, $7 US. And it was just a, <laughs> a bottle of Boom Boo Rum. It looked cool. I'm sold. I'll take it for the rest of my life. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. So I just keep saying that every episode. Hopefully somebody will listen and, uh, you know. It's they, happening. Yeah. It's going to happen. Exactly. You put it out in the universe, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. That's right, baby. Okay. So I think this is officially the longest chat I've ever had on a podcast because this call is like 40 minutes. The last call was like, I don't know, 10 minutes, but it'll be yeah. good. People will listen. We'll get lots of comments, opinions, thoughts, feelings, emotions. Um this is part of that Power Talk series. So obviously, if you're still listening in, number one, thank you. Number two, let us know in the comments section how you felt about this chat, how you liked it, so on and so forth. And then I've got your apparel website because I couldn't find a website for Fall of House uh, Productions. Right. So on today's show yes, notes... Yes, it's coming. Okay. Actually, there is a website. I'm sorry. Yes, there is a website. It's still very new, so it's not 100% there. Oh. In the show... F-O-T-H productions.com. <laughs> So Foth Productions. Okay, <laughs> so then that's fantastic. I'm gonna make a gothic metal band called Foth, and I'm just Foth, gonna yeah. I'm gonna quote you on it. Uh, it was the <laughs> A B C D E F G. It was the previous letter in the alphabet. Um, <laughs> so I will link in today's show notes rdrkapparel.co and fothproductions.com for anybody who wants yes. to go ahead and get uh, in touch with Jake, I guess, or more of what's going yeah. on with Jake. Yeah, I get uh, I get emails to both of uh, from both sites right to my phone. So, whoa! Send your emails. Whoa. Send your, don't send hate mail. I won't answer. I'll just cry a little bit, but you'll never know that because I'm not going to tell you about it. Yeah, you know, I'll be I'll be honestly, I'll be ter- terribly surprised. In like the five years I've been doing this, I've gotten silly comments, but I feel like I haven't hit the internet yet because I haven't really gotten any hate. Right. Granted, maybe I'm not doing anything to support that. Like I, I guess I could do that for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I could, I could, I could spark that bubble if oh. you want that. 
That'd be awesome. Because the last comment I yeah. got was basically that I'm bubbling with love and it's visible that I love my guests and I love my family. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, maybe that's why I'm not getting any, any hate mail. I don't know. No, that's absolutely true. That comment is definitely true. Um, however, for my purposes of throwing a lot of hate mail your way, I totally disagree with that. Oh. You are the most rude podcaster I've ever met in my life. Yeah. And you will never see me on the show for a fourth time. Wow. Maybe a third, not a fourth. Well, yeah. Yeah. I hate your podcast so much. I'm going to stop my music career so that I never have a reason to come on your show <laughs> ever Roderick again. Roderick is dead, dude. Yeah. It's Roderick. Dead because of you. Yeah. Roderick died yeah, you because of it. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, you're going to get a, you're going to get some hate mail from, uh, anonymous. So, or unknown. What was it? Unknown. Unknown with a zero. Unno- yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to get that. Okay. Or a Norwegian ooh, so that there's a really big slash in the middle of it. That's, you know what? It's common these days. A lot mm-hmm. of artists are doing that, actually. Yeah. They're either no vowels or some other languages vowels. That's how that's going. Yeah. Uh-huh. I was actually just yep. chatting with a friend of mine who were helping uh, produce, mix, master. Speaking of getting record contract, we're getting him in touch with a label. Uh, yeah, Epictronic. We're getting him in, truck with, truck, in touch with a label. He's an EDM artist out of Vancouver. And one of the things we were actually just chatting about was his branding. I think he spends a little too much time thinking about it. I think he should spend more time kicking content out, getting feedback, letting things happen a little more organically. But he's got some time. And one of the things that he actually brought up was, what if I remove the vowels out of my name? And I said, well, it seems really trendy right now. Is it something... Yeah. Are you doing it because it's trendy and it'll be out in two years or are you doing it because like that's legitimately where your soul is at? And I think the old adage of being an artist from your heart truly is the way to go. And I know it sounds foofy, but if I've learned anything in five years of doing this podcast, it's no different than anybody who watches my show. They come right. on and they're like, you're you. And I'm like, as far as I know, I am and like. But no, like I thought it was an act. It turns out you're actually you. When I met Ingve Momstein, he was him. Like everything that you would think of as Ingve Momstein was him. So right. you can't fake it. You really have to be you. You can't. You can't. And that's that's honestly the most important thing. Um other than your I mean, maybe on top of you, yeah, on top of your five five year plan is be you. Because if you build on a brand that's not real. First off, you're going to change as a person um, throughout your career, and that brand is going to change. But it's going to change organically with you. So if you look at yourself in five years, or you look back at yourself in five years, is that is that having no vowels thing still going to fit you as a person? Yeah, probably not. You know, so being organically yourself, people people see through that. If mm-hmm. you don't. If you're not organic with your your artistry or your music or your, you know, your branding, people see through that. They don't like it. They don't like when they when they when it looks fake or it doesn't look organic or it doesn't look like you. You That's know. Right. We've already got a rap so. album planned out for Avila. She's gonna, absolutely. She's gonna have her hair up like this because she usually uh-huh. does. Mm-hmm. She likes to stick her hand in her diaper, so that's gonna be part of her her hip hop persona. Is she's gonna have her hand in her diaper, mm-hmm. and she's right on your face. Yep, she's gonna write on my face and then Yeah. Booga booga booga. Okay. Well, my wife is gonna be home. We're gonna be making some cacio e pepe for supper. Nice. Mm-hmm. Sounds delicious. I'll be over in a little bit. Sweet! We're gonna go pick some mint <laughs> gonna go pick some mint from the garden. I'll get grinding on the parmesan and the pecorino. You can churn the butter and then we'll have some amazing uh, delicious. Absolutely. Yeah. Me, Violet, and Tarzan will be over very soon. Sweet! I dig it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on to chat about uh, the music industry. I had fun. I hope you had fun. Gabe is going to have fun editing all this together. Crispy Bagels. Crispy Bagels. Bliss Baked Goods. What is the music industry? How the industry needs to change? Diversifying your portfolio. Uh, go ahead and go to fothproductions.com. It'll be in the show notes down below. Uh, and then if anybody's still listening, which is statistically untrue, then thank you for beating my stats. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope you walk away with, uh, I don't know, at least the idea to, to, to beat up John in the comments. Yep. That's that's at least the one thing I want, is a little bit of hate mail for John. Sweet. All right, well, thank you so much, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on, Jake. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. <laughs>